In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold a navel shell designed by Tomoko Fuse. Diagrams can be found in the book Spiral Origami Art Design by Tomoko Fuse. It's an absolutely wonderful book and you can check a written or a video review both by myself for more details. You find the links in the video description. Now in this video I'm going to be using a square sheet of paper with a side length of 24 centimeters or nine and a half inches. And the resulting model will then have a width of about 10 centimeters or four inches and a height of about six centimeters or two and a half inches. So let's get started. First, lay down your paper with the color of the shell on the reverse. So for me, um, I want uh, the shell to have this color. I'm going to start with the white side up. Then we're going to crease the diagonal by bringing point to point. And unfold. Now bring each of these edges to the central crease, but I advise you to leave just a slight tiny gap because then it'll be easier to fold the model in again. So I'm not quite going to go to the point and I'm not quite going to touch the crease. And I find that to be slightly easier. Um, in some ways, um, controlled imprecision actually sometimes gives you nicer results. So you can see here I left a slight gap, which is where the paper shows, and then it's easier to fold this in half again. But now let's first um, make a crease right along this edge by folding in that paper. And you want it to be quite a straight crease, so you pinch one point and then you align this crease line with the bottom crease line, or kind of that gap that you left and crease. Unfold again and we're going to flip over the paper and now we're going to take the bottom uh, point, the tip, and bring it exactly to that intersection of these two creases we already made. And crease. You want to make quite strong creases so use your um, fingernail, not the tip, but kind of this wide area. Or if you have it, kind of use a bone folder or a chopstick or anything like that. Unfold and then align that crease with the crease line in the top to divide that section into half. And again, make a nice sharp crease. Then divide into quarters by bringing this crease line to that one. And unfold. And this crease line to the top one. You will do yourself a big favor if you make strong creases here, especially right in the end. Because you will need those as a reference later. Unfold and now we're going to divide into eighths. So align this crease line with that one. This one with that one. This one with that one. And this with that one.
and unfold. Now we're going to take the tip again and align it not with um, crease lines themselves but um, in between. So this is a full section and then we're going to go in half a section and I'm just going to eyeball that. I'm not going to be super precise here because it's, it's totally okay. And go just about halfway between these two creases and make a crease. Then I'm again going to jump one and a half sections. So this is a uh, half and one. So we're going to be right along the crease and crease. And then again one and a half. This is the third crease we're making. Again going one and a half, the fourth crease. The fifth, let's just put some weight on here. And the sixth, you can go on for a while. I think I'll go down to 11 or something. What was that? Number six, number seven, number eight, nine, ten. And depending on your paper size, you may want to finish earlier um, or even go on longer. But I'll stop here with 11 creases added. Now we're going to flip over the paper and we're going to take this top tip and we're going to fold it in so that it aligns with the second crease line. So I'm just going to turn the paper, align it with the second one, that's the first one, that's the second one, and make a crease. Then I'm going to hide the paper inside and so that it doesn't um, unfold in here again, I'm going to repeat those, uh, that crease line here again so that it's also on this layer of paper. Same with this one. So that's the first one. I'm just going to crease. And the second one, I'm also going to crease through those layers. So now it's quite secured. And we can push that flat again. Now we need to add quite a bunch of uh, new creases all along here. They're all going to be uh, valley folds and I'm just going to show you on one of these. I'm going to start from this point and make creases to the um, crease above so that you have like this slightly diagonal crease and we need to do that on all of them. So one idea you might have is that you fold this in half and then you'd start a crease in one of these points and go to the top. So I could, for example, do it like this. Make a crease. And then you'd have a valley fold on one side, a mountain fold on the other. And you could reverse the crease so that it's valley folds on both sides. So that's one way, but uh, me personally, I don't think that pre-crease step helps um, a whole lot. So instead what I'd do is I'd just um, add those creases uh, one by one, because you need to reverse one in any case. So I'm just going to turn this over because um, for this step then I'd fold in the air and I'd always, um, let's go with this one, I'd start the crease in this point and uh, pinch it into place so that you have like a slight mark there and then get that point pinched there we go and then connect it by pressing and same thing on the other side I will say though that this is um, harder especially if you're using large paper and on these last sections so here's another tip you might want to use a ruler and a bone folder or um, an empty pen or a stylus. Something that has um, a tip that isn't entirely sharp, but uh, where, you know, it does have a tip. And then you could align and then 
score the paper and you can do that all the way. And I'm just going to go ahead and make the bigger ones with this method and the smaller ones just as I showed you before as we go along. Um, I personally think it's easier to to do kind of slightly different folding methods depending on where you are because uh, the creases uh, require a different uh, uh, different skills in some ways. So using different methods throughout uh, kind of the same step is absolutely uh, legitimate and you will just have to see um, how you prefer adding the creases and this is just what I like to do. Uh, this is also what I'd do even for the smaller sections when using a slightly special paper. So for example here I used quite a furry paper and it was uh, very difficult to, to see creases and to get creases in nicely and precisely. So I did that throughout. So depending on which paper you're using, um, it also um, will change how you prefer making creases. And then I'm just going to strengthen all of these creases, but the paper now will really want to go along those score lines, which is going to be a lot easier. And um, you just do that all the way here and also to the top. Now for the steps where I'm not um, scoring, I actually like to kind of pinch this into place up to the crease line and um, once you've folded one side you can really completely press that flat and then you'll have the exact reference point so that you always get a nice um, point here so that the creases meet in exactly the right place. So that might help you with getting quite nice precision without, um, without scoring the paper before. So once you've got all these creases added, we can start collapsing. For this, we're going to fold the paper in half, the model, just like that. And now we're always going to go along the crease line. So you'll always have valleys, which are kind of the straight creases, and mountains, which are the, um, the slightly diagonal creases. And we can kind of Take the paper and push it open a bit here um, to then push from this side inside so that this paper vanishes inside. I'm going to show it from the back here. You can see the paper pushes inside and then you can close like that. I'm just going to show that in from a more closer uh, view. So you've got this and then you push in the paper, just like that, so that it looks the same on both sides. And then you do the second one. Um, and I actually forgot a small step. So you have this tip here and you might want to fold it in a little bit. I guess you could also keep it like that if you like the look. But um, let's keep with Tomoko Fusa's design and we're going to take that tip and fold it in so that it meets kind of after this first section where you actually have a mountain fold. So after the second crease you've got there. So once we've got that hidden inside, we can start collapsing again, pushing that paper Inside, it's going to be a bit harder this time again because um, you need to add some creases on the paper you just folded in. 
and then just press it flat to make strong creases. And then we can again do the second one and the third one and the fourth one. And at some point you will see that this tip here is going to be hidden from that mountain fold that you're going to fold. And at that point you're just going to take it and put it on top. And now you want to always ensure that this tip is on top. And then you just go all the way to the back, always collapsing symmetrically on both sides. You can see it's on both sides it looks the same. And on the front you're going to put that, um, that start of the shell on top. And in the back, the navel will start to form. Especially um, as the sections get larger, I prefer to actually fold just the front first by itself and then the back by itself, rather than doing them simultaneously. So once you've got the last one collapsed, we can just press this flat a bit. It already looks quite beautiful, but this section still needs to be finished off. So for that, we're going to flip the model over. You can see the nice navel here. Actually, you might say um, you prefer the, the back view more than the front view, and that's really just up to taste. Now, you can see that there is um, an extra layer of paper here, which is kind of, you can see here, um, it's the central one of these two that um, meet this edge. We're going to take that as a reference point. So I'm just going to eyeball that, or you can kind of make a small pinch mark if you like. And now we're going to add a crease line from this point up to that point. A mountain fold and it doesn't need to be a hundred percent precise it's just kind of so that you have an idea of where to add the crease and then we're going to take this edge and align it with that crease line leaving perhaps a slight gap but definitely not um, going over it you don't want anything like that happening you really do want to have um, it underneath because then uh, we're going to tuck this inside to hide it, and you really don't want any paper showing here. Then you're going to take the other side and just going to check that this is in the front. And also align it, make a crease. And then you can see we have a, a pocket here, and we're going to bend this paper to put it inside that pocket and push the paper inside. You will have quite a lot of layers of paper, so it's not going to go completely flat. And here you can see we want to again have a point in that uh, corner, where we want to form that corner. And once you have that paper pushed in, then you can fold it flat by just really putting pressure on it, pressing it together, straightening it out until you're happy. And once you've pressed it flat quite a lot, you can actually open it a bit, round it open a bit perhaps. And then your navel shell, designed by Tomoko Fuse, is all done. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed this model as much as me perhaps you will be interested in getting this book which has many more wonderful models Spiral Origami Art Design by Tomoko Fuse. Enjoy!